Good evening. This is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More. It was an extremely busy day of ministry. I'm coming against quite a bit of rejection in my life. And yet, I can tell you that I had a beautiful Thanksgiving with my daughters. as many of them as possible. And it's time for me to be really careful about practicing what I preach. And what I preach is, after all this time, reading is good for my soul. Poetry is one of the best healers that I have personally. I couple that with my runes and tarot, and it is quite a nice thing. So I have had a poem by Robert Browning that I've been waiting to do some work with. And so here I go. Johannes Agricola in meditation. Let me tell you something as someone who astral projects and um, is an archangel, but is a normal person as well. I know when somebody is channeling and Robert Browning, whether he was aware of it or not, knew that he could channel in his poetry. There's heaven above, and night by night, I look right through its gorgeous roof. No suns and moons, though air so bright, avail to stop me, splendor proof. I keep the broods of stars aloof, for I intend to get to God. For tis to God I speed so fast, for in God's breast my own abode. Those shoals of dazzling glory past, I lay my spirit down at last. I lie where I have always lain. God smiles as he always smiled, ere suns and moons could wax and wane, ere stars were thunder girt or piled. The heavens God thought on me. His child, ordained a life for me, arrayed its circumstances, every one. To the minutest A, God said, this head, this hand should rest upon. Thus, ere he fashioned star or sun, and having thus created me, thus rooted me, he bade me grow, guiltless forever. Oh my goodness, like a tree. I spoke with the trees today. That buds and blooms, nor seeks to know the law by which it prospers so. But sure, that thought and word and deed all go to swell his love for me. Me, made because that love had need of something irreversibly pledged solely its content to be. Yes, yes, a tree which must ascend. No poison gourd foredoomed to stoop. I have God's warrant, could I blend all hideous sins as in a cup to drink the mingled venoms up. Secure my nature will convert the draught to blossoming gladness fast while sweet dews turn to the gourd's hurt and bloat. And while they bloat it, blast, as from the first its lot was cast. For as I lie, smiled on, full fed, by exhausted power to bless, I gaze below on hell's fierce bed, and those its waves of flames oppress, swarming in ghastly wretchedness. Whose life on earth aspired to be 
one altar smoke so pure to win, if not love like God's love for me, at least to keep his anger in. And all their striving turn to sin. Priest, doctor, hermit, monk grown white with prayer, the broken-hearted nun, the martyr, the wan acolyte, the incense-swinging child, undone. Before God fashioned star or sun, God, whom I praise, how could I praise, if such as I might understand, make out and reckon on his ways, and bargain for his love and his stand, paying a price at his right hand? I will apply color to it tomorrow, but I will not apply the artwork yet. I haven't decided which verses to do. I want to tell the world system and to my dear family why I did this tonight. This is hopefully the final time I faced betrayal. But it may not be. And what I listened to for a little while as I cried, broke again, broke down. I've done it any number of times. People call me things I'm not. And I get up again and be me. I read the poetry to strengthen my spirit for tomorrow. The colors will come. It may take some time. And I have time. I have plans and a future. And And it's time for me to forgive millennials your arrogance against your parents. You are foolish indeed. You do not have wisdom. Your head is stuffed with fucking knowledge. And you have hurt people. Your parents. And you think you know better. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, only time will tell. But I wept for myself tonight, no one else, and that is the first time I can tell you that I did that. So if you can, if you know me, rejoice. If you like. I had to ask Curtis a painful question. I didn't do it face to face. It was too painful for he and I. For him and me is actually more accurate if you're an author. <clears throat> if I left tonight, I was driving home safely, but I certainly have a lot of flipped cars in my testimony. If I flipped this car and didn't make it, you can go ask my daughter Dorothy. My car tried to flip in a storm, in a flood, in Oak Hill on 290. The tires were turning back and forth uncontrollably. I went deep. I called on Jesus over and over. My daughter and I were terrified. There were dogs, our baby puppies in the back. And I knew just when to turn that wheel and land that Subaru on the side perfectly. Took a deep breath and we went home. It was raining too much. So 
I'm not one of those unhinged people. <laughs> I'm sorry people are afraid of me and therefore have betrayed me. But I came to a point about a year ago where I realized I can't excuse my mother anymore. And if I couldn't excuse my mother, who was good for me in many ways and did protect me in many ways, What makes you think I don't have to do the same thing for you, Millennial? You're not nearly as old in my life. You haven't been through diddly shit compared to me. And you should know me by, know me by now. I don't compare. I don't compete. I live one day at a time in love with you. in love with me and I've always done that but I had to ask Curtis none of them none of them would actually be sad if I flipped this car right now and was gone accidentally silence he didn't know what to say They would actually have a better time of it if I was not in their life. They would be relieved, wouldn't they, Curtis? He finally admitted, well, I don't think all of them, not just talk, generally speaking. In other words, I've got a lot of people that turned on me. It's not just millennials. It's baby boomers and Gen X also from my past Christian life. I know who I can follow on Facebook and it'd be okay. They knew my brother. They would not doubt the astral projection ability of my brother, things like that. But Christianity, by and large, is turned away from the God of the Bible, the God of the universe, unseen and seen. I never did. Some of the people I'm talking about, though, they haven't known me close up and mischaracterized me. Some of them have to stay away from me to protect me. Others of them. I've actually been able to communicate in a way that nobody understands but those people and I. So things were very clearly communicated. And oh, by the way, we had a really good time Thanksgiving. So I would suggest, seeing as how everybody knows his name. <laughs> I would suggest you straighten up. When I say that, I'm Carrie Ann Beatty Coffey, and I am my father's daughter. And Curtis will tell you. It was difficult being raised by Robert Hilton Beatty Jr. Let me tell you, he knew there was something up with me. He prepared me to stand. My daddy would have never reached this point. I'm glad he's gone. His dear Republican Party has turned on God. And I don't even know if my daddy would have seen it. They're so full of money and power. <sighs> I'm just a stupid woman, you know. It isn't easy having to be honest after so many people hid so many things. And poetry really is the way I read from T.S. Eliot this morning, and now I've read from Robert Browning tonight. It's time for me to read and share it with you, share the colors that I see. And I'm looking forward to that. But when it comes to face to face, Well, I made it very clear, so I'm going to make it really clear right here because I said it over and over the past three days as I had to go through that again and again and again, but I will not go through it again. I will simply read poetry and then tell you the truth of my life. When it comes upon me to do so, the poets will lead me out.
I lost Edith Renee, Betty Coffey, and Margaret Elizabeth Betty Coffey. Not of my free will. My daughter is going to turn 33 next year. Until I have my two daughters back, I told them I'm completely broken. And to love on a young man that has been judged wrongfully. Thanksgiving, I looked at him and I said, people are saying I'm mentally ill and stuff or that I had mental breakdowns and stuff. That is bullshit. I will tell you what mental illness is, whether you have to take medication or not. Being willing to believe lies to keep a hold of your own truth. You will be eaten alive. I don't even have to curse you. Seared conscience. America. Seared conscience is a very nasty thing you love. This is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovered.